All right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Peak Wellness Hour. You are here with the founder and CEO of Peak Home Care Associates, Edith, and I am Angelina, um, LPN and networking specialist with Peak Home Care Associates. We are so excited to be here with you today. This is the end of September. Um, last Saturday, last day, last Saturday of September. And for those of you that have been connected with us, we have been speaking about, um, it's been Alzheimer's Awareness Month, World Alzheimer's Awareness Month. So as um, Edith and I were talking about before um, starting the broadcast, which you can find on PCOM Care Associates page on Facebook, as well as um YouTube, which is the same, Peak Home Care Associates. Please subscribe to both of those. But before we were, uh, before we came on the live broadcast, we were speaking about um, the differences, and I was sharing that my husband, um, who is also a um, memory care unit manager um, over at Traditions at North Willow, he is um, in their team um, along with many others here in Indianapolis. They are down at IU for the um, Alzheimer's walk, okay, that's, that's going on today. Um, if you have a chance, it's going on from 9 a.m. I think he got down there at 9 a.m. till um, about one. I don't know if that's how long they're gonna stay or if it, if the whole thing is till one, you know, or, um, or beyond. So check that out. I'm sure it's on Eventbrite and I'm sure you could find it anywhere if you Google um, Alzheimer's walk in Indianapolis. Um, but when we're speaking on the fact that September is World Alzheimer's Awareness Month. I believe October is um, Dementia Awareness Month. And so that mm. those are two different things because and that we won't get deep into it, but just a little um, background behind it. The dementia is the umbrella of um, memory loss. Okay, so when we're talking about Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is just one form of dementia right? Um, Parkinson's, uh, you have dementia related Parkinson's, that's different. You have AIDS related dementia, there are different types of dementias. So when we talk about Alzheimer's dementia versus, um, or Alzheimer's awareness versus dementia awareness, um, they're actually celebrate, they're actually acknowledging two different um, situations with dementia being a broader scale um, as of October for their awareness month. So just a little background behind that. Um, so today we're gonna finish up the conversation and the conversation with dementia or anything we speak on is never limited, um, but we will finish up the whole dementia conversation um, for the month of September, um, mm -hmm. talking about being proactive with signs and symptoms of dementia today. And I want to thank uh, Edith for allowing me to um, take the month to have these conversations. Like I said, I know next month is now going to be Dementia Awareness Month, but I promise you we're going to be talking about other things <laughs> next month other than dementia. Right. <laughs> I don't know what you think we forgot <laughs> about other things. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about other conversations when it comes to healthcare, caregiving, healthcare providers, all kinds of stuff. And it is definitely brought to you with good intentions by Peak Home Care Associates of Noblesville, Indiana. Um, so definitely make sure as you're liking and sharing that you are checking us out. I'm going to put our, um, I'm going to put our information up 
And so I don't look like I'm not being attentive in this camera and I'm looking to the side. I'm going to let Queen Edith talk um, if she'd like as I'm trying to um, find these links to give you all. Well, 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 friends and family, it's, it's always exciting, a privilege and an honor to be able to come your way this time again. I remember being so excited about the beginning of September and all too soon, it's over. Mm -hmm. September is over. The ninth month of the year is over. over. What are you pregnant with? Or oh, maybe what did you birth? <laughs> What are you birthing? Um, well, this is, um, today we are focused on memory loss. Our main focus will be talking about memory loss. Basically, we're putting together everything we've discussed through so far and um, bringing you a summary of what memory, lo memory loss looks like and some of the ways we can, you know, solve it or help minimize it, you know, it's because um, sometimes it's not because that person has been diagnosed. It's because, you know, you know your mom, you know your dad, and you can tell. You can tell that there's some kind of a certain level of memory loss going on. So even before there's a diagnosis, even before it becomes official, what are some of the things you can do to minimize it? I love that, Queen. What are some of the things we can do to minimize it? How can we work it in such a way that it doesn't keep escalating? So that's what we are going to do today. But how are you? How are you doing, caregivers? How are you doing, families? Mm -hmm. How are you all doing? The weather is getting beautiful if you live in the United States. So yeah. let's enjoy it. Let's go out, get some more sunshine. Let's go yeah. out and get some more sunshine. So, Queen, I'll let you go into it. I think you're ready. I shall. I shall. And as it is just said, definitely go out and enjoy the weather. Last week, we talked about, um, and actually, this was the conversation that we were going to have last week. It just all fell together, right? Um, because last week, we had such an amazing conversation. I really enjoyed. I love talking about being outdoors. If you all see me, I'm usually outdoors <clears throat> when we're broadcasting. The past few weeks, I have not been but um, I am missing out. So I want to make sure you all can see me in clear view without the sun shining and deflecting the light. But I am definitely going to be out there. Um, so you all make sure you get some sun. Take your loved ones out. Um, do not count our senior citizens out for wanting to get out and get some fresh air. And it's a really good time, um, especially if you live in the Midwest I, we are here in Indianapolis, um, Fishers, Noblesville, that area of Indiana where we do serve the community, right? Yeah. Um, you can see that the leaves are changing. You know, some of them are starting to fall. I don't like it so much when they fall early. I love to see them change okay. in the background. Um, it's so beautiful, you know, and there's something so serene about it. So make sure you all take a second. We're always on our phones. We always have our phones in our hands. Go, you know, I like to drive and don't drive and text and play on your phone, but at a stoplight, if you can get a good picture, but it's a good opportunity to get out and get some pictures with your loved ones, especially your senior loved ones. I love taking pictures with the foliage and everything changing. Get some pictures, make some memories with your loved ones, with your senior loved ones, with your family. Get out and make some memories. If you are um, a healthcare provider, especially those that do um, activities, right, in senior communities, um, activity directors, Awesome time to get out. A lot of those places have um, have fenced in, you know, um, secure areas. You know, get out there on those patios, get some fresh air, and make some memories. Take some pictures. So that is my advice with that. Um, yeah. So I am going to share my screen and share with you all the conversation we're going to have today.
Okay. I'm really talking awesome. about, um, I don't yeah. know if that's you. I'm sorry. Well, no, go ahead, please. Share the conversation. We're talking about um, outdoors. Mm -hmm. I've come to find out something that I've loved doing. Just looking at the skyline. You know, I go to Mansi a lot. And so mm -hmm. there isn't that much traffic. And just driving there in the morning, coming back, the skyline. Mm -hmm. I find myself stopping and taking pictures of the beautiful. I can't, I don't understand how the clouds will look so layered, like the waves in, I don't know, but I guess I'm crazy. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? No, it's really pretty. I have so many pictures in my phone where I safely drive to <laughs> take these pictures because they're so beautiful, you know, and when you catch them, it's beautiful. So yes, definitely. I love nature. Show some love for nature, you all, and enjoy it. Definitely enjoy it. So yes, definitely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yes, it's, it's beautiful. There, you can't you can't beat nature. You can't beat nature. You it can't. Alive. And if you pay attention to um, the different sense of nature, you know, when it rains, you know, that crisp, cold snow has a scent, you know, it's, it's some, it's, I can't explain it. It's like a cold freshness, you know, a bitter know, cold freshness. when you stayed indoors in the heat for so long, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's refreshing. It's, it's life giving, I think. There you, there you go. There you go. It certainly is. I agree. I agree. So yeah, everybody gets some fresh air. We're going to dive into this conversation. Um, again, if you all catch me looking down, if I'm on the phone, it's only because I am managing, we are managing these different platforms and trying to be responsible with that. So you do have my full attention. Um, I might be looking up some things or whatnot. So, but I am definitely engaged in the conversation. So give me just a second. We're going to have this conversation. Um, I'm going to share my screen. There we go. That is the sound of being busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that sounds like. Okay. Yes. I so always know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what time I'm it is. I'm going to change my ringtone. I don't like it anymore, but. I, you know, I leave it alone. I guess it, you know, I know what it means. <laughs> chop, chop. I'm trying to work. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, it's well, well. It's a beautiful day. Here we are, Become Care Associates, with you in your homes. Are you sipping your coffee? Did you just get up? <laughs> we are entering, not rudely, with all due respect. Thank you for letting us in. Focus number one memory loss. From Noblesville, Indiana, where our offices are to our homes which is where indianapolis fishes yeah to, to all of indiana and basically all the world because i'm from west africa and my friends watch us and comment so we are literally from our back here to the world wow what an amazing gift the internet is yes so queen <laughs> memory loss yes you put this together I did. It is so the this the slide you just saw before this, um, not waiting till it's too late. Um, it's actually a series of um situations. So this was memory loss, it was fall prevention, um, it was looking at weight loss. So I, I love to uh write, I love to put things together and um educate. So this was this the first one. And actually, it was not the first one. I think weight loss was the first one. I switched this one to number one for this conversation. But it's important because I did not want to put Alzheimer's or dementia as the focus because a lot of there's a lot of times where that's not the situation. It's not dementia. It is not all time. You know, it's something. There's a change in something. You know. Um, so that's what we want to address uh, today. So it's not just and being proactive, right? So if we're proactive and we watch these things, we we pay attention to our seniors, our independent seniors, and shout out to them being independent with their dignity. 
but uh, we all need looking after sometimes, you know, we look after one another um, within um, our business here, you know, and not just with peak with healthcare, you know, so we all need, um, you know, some attention sometimes. So this conversation is looking at just that. Um, don't wait until it's too late, you know, being proactive instead of reactive. Are we noticing memory loss? Um, there are so many in situations where you will find individuals, you can hold conversations with individuals. And if you talk with them long enough, you will find that they might be masking things. Mm. That's where it's, uh-huh, yeah, you're right. And they chuckle and those kind of things. There's not clear, direct um, answers, you know. Um, and it's easy to do if the conversation is not in depth, you know. Mm. So we're going to look at some of those things. Um, if you ask someone that you haven't seen in a couple of days, if they had ate breakfast and it's two o'clock in the afternoon, Mm. They might not know it's two o'clock in the afternoon. They know it's later in the day because something in their body, you know, tells you that, right? But of course you ate breakfast. Why wouldn't you have? Because breakfast time has passed. When in our actuality, they have not. Maybe they did yesterday. But ask them what they ate for breakfast. And they'll say, I don't, I don't remember. Cereal, eggs, you know, I mean, so um, those are some telltale signs that you need to pay attention and just be mindful and focus on things, right? Um, so here it says there are many factors that can contribute to change in cognition or memory loss. You know, we try not to use big words here, not, <laughs> not say big words. We try not to use uh, medical words. Right, because you want to be relatable. So cognition is uh, memory, okay? your your level of memory, okay. Um, and these things are um, include but not limited to. And before we begin, we always want to make it clear that all because we are in the field of healthcare, we are not giving medical advice on this day or any given day, okay. Please definitely. Um, Consult with your primary care physician. And I say that That's because right. you don't want to just go get information from just anybody because they have a license. So we operate in the scope of our, our realm and we just share our truth and our knowledge and do advise you to follow up accordingly um, with your primary care physician. So um, the first thing you want to look at, and we'll break this down bit by bit, right? Right. Thank you for your time. We don't want to keep you. So thank you for your time and attentiveness. Please make sure you like and share. Um, okay, sure. so you rock. <laughs> um, extended increase of stress or fatigue. And we'll have this dialogue. So what does that look like for you all? How can that cause memory loss? Having increased stress or fatigue very easy. Have you ever been so stressed out that you can't remember where you put your keys? I did it the other day. This is a true story. <laughs> I just wasn't focused. You know, I won't say I was stressed or I was probably tired. It was early in the morning. I couldn't find my keys. And actually, I couldn't find them the evening before. And I took my husband's vehicle to go get whatever I was going to go get. I can't even remember. But uh, so I couldn't find my keys and I knew I had to go see a client the next morning. I was like, I'll just deal with it later. You know, they'll show up. I put my keys, try to put my keys in the same place all the time. If not, they're in my purse. When I tell you, I kept looking and looking and I'm trying to remember, well, what did I do? I came in. I can't. I actually, oh, sure. My son must have him. He. I wanted to go. I wanted to go off with him. Like, look again. Look again. I just knew he had my keys because I could not find them. After the fifth time of looking in my purse, there they were. My husband was like, "Where were they?" I was like, "I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you. Mind your business." <laughs> you know. But if you but if you live your life like that all the time in chaos, 
that my point is that's where you can pull that memory loss. You know, where over time you really stop thinking, you stop using your brain. When we don't, when we cease to focus and be mindful of what we're doing on a regular basis, we auto, we eventually wind up in autopilot. Has anyone ever gotten up and gotten dressed, gone to work, you drove and you've driven to work? And you think about it and you can't remember really, like you have no concept. You just, you went from A to B, if that makes any sense. Like right. you didn't pay attention to the signs. You didn't pay attention to, like nothing dawned on you. You just were there because we're always on, a lot of us are on autopilot all the time and we're not using our brains. We're not using, a, we're not thinking. And that muscle tissue, that that brain tissue, that muscle it will deteriorate when we keep living on autopilot out of stress and fatigue. And I'm going to stop talking right there. I'm going to let you talk, Queen. No, just... I was, I was going to ask a question. Mm -hmm. You, you, you've, you made some profound statements. Like I said, I'm a highlighter. So I like to highlight things. You use the word chaos. You use the word autopilot. You use the word, um, I've forgotten. I should have written the third one. I've forgotten, but, Routine sometimes stops us from thinking. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you talk about autopilot, for example, one day I was coming home from the office. My goal was to stop at the Kroger just close to where I live and pick up one or two things. Well, I was talking on the phone not paying attention and I wasn't holding the phone or anything. I mean, someone called me and I answered a quick question, but I just drove home. When I parked my car and I, I normally I sit for a minute in the car and, re, and then I remembered I'm, I'm home. I was supposed to go to Kroger, mm -hmm. but you are not autopilot when somebody asks you, how do I get to your house? And you don't know the names of the streets. Mm -hmm. You kind mm -hmm. of go without thinking about it. And many of us are living lives like that. Mm -hmm. We are not self-aware to the point that we are participants. I love it. In our own lives. And I want to say this, not so much to our seniors who are already there and may not even have as much activity, but to us um, caregivers and everyone else listening to us, because this applies. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that is missing is that we are living our lives on auto pilot so we can't remember when we left where we left the key we can't remember what we last ate or when we ate we don't even know whether we are drinking enough water whether we are walking in we don't know because we just go from need to do this need to do that need to do that need to do that do 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 and not be Yes. And as we talk about issues affecting our seniors, we must know that every single day of our lives, we also progressing. Yes. Yes. And before we get there, we want to do the things that will enhance. There's so much we may not be able to change. But at least there's things we can minimize or prevent. So let's live consciously. Okay, let's yeah. go out. You know, you see people walking out in the streets, girl. We don't even notice our surroundings. That is scary. Mm -hmm. Someone can grab your phone from you, grab your purse from you, do something before you realize, oh my God, what did I just do? We yeah. have these things in our ears. We are so living like this and we have this huge world before us. Yes. We don't notice the next person on the street. 
Mm -hmm. You don't notice the senior next to you. You don't notice the person who looks like they're getting ready to faint and ask, are you okay? Mm -hmm. We are limiting our, ourselves to our own worlds, even in the public area. When we could look out for each other, we are not aware of our surroundings. So having said that, I have a question for you. Yes. You talked about um, little forgetfulness in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you walk into a room, right? To pick up something. You get there and you mm -hmm. forget why you walked out. You went in there mm -hmm. and then you leave. And then you remember and you go back again. Is that considered as a part of memory loss? How would you compare that to an actual memory loss? I would call that <clears throat> not being focused oh. and not being mindful. Because mm -hmm. how many of us do it on a regular basis? We can do it two, three times a week. We may do it two, three times a day. What that would first tell me is that perhaps you are not focused and mindful. And I do it often because I'm in the kitchen. I'm cooking. I'm washing dishes as I cook. And then I go in the bedroom because I need a dish towel because I just did laundry, took the laundry out. I need a dish towel. Well, now I've gone in there and I remember, you know what? The food, the, 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 the potatoes are boiling. The water, the dishes are sitting in hot water. I still haven't folded these clothes. I need to fold these clothes. And if I'm going in here to put these towels in the bathroom, I probably need to go ahead and put some toilet bowl cleaner in the toilet so it can sit while I'm doing this. All these things are going through my head. <laughs> and I can't remember what I'm going in there for. Because I'm so distracted. You know, I think we have to stop doing, people think that multitasking is a, um, is a strength. Superpower. It's not a strength. It is a weakness because if you're focused on multiple things, then how much of each thing gets all of your attention? And that's well done, right? Yes. So if we learn how to manage our time, then we can focus on these things. It shouldn't take me, you know, eight hours to, to do the dishes, dinner, laundry, and the bathroom. It shouldn't take eight hours to do that. But because I'm all over the place and I'm picking up little things, you know, but had I just done the dishes for 15 minutes, cooked for 30 minutes, done laundry, you know, it would have made more sense. So to answer your question, I think we need to be more focused and that's why the, the, you know, learning how to find ways to de-stress um, and get some rest where you find some peace. You know, we can learn how to manage our minds um, that dictate how we re react to things, how we respond, you know, because um, it definitely it definitely dictates how our, how our bodies respond. Um, that stress and that fatigue. So, no, I believe that um, when it comes to those kind of situations where you walk into a room, we're just not being mindful. And sometimes you need to say to yourself, okay, I know I do this often. So you're moving from point A to point B. You're going in here to get this towel, get this towel, stay focused and come out. If you know you, that's what you do often, tell yourself that. And if you have a problem with telling yourself that and being accountable to yourself because you're not focused, maybe you'll be more focused and you won't have to keep telling yourself, okay, don't forget, we're going in here. How many of us hate that at work? You know, don't forget to go make up so-and-so's bed before you leave. Like, I know how to do my job, but you know, sometimes we forget about things. We tell our children, don't forget to make your bed before you leave. And it's like, I know, but you don't. And then you have an excuse for why. Well, I was running late and you weren't focused. You didn't forget, you weren't focused. <laughs> You know, so I'll land with that. And, and in this age, 
you realize that you know how your phone beeps and beeps because there's instagram there's facebook there's linkedin there's whatsapp there is all these apps and messages keep going and sometimes they're not even personal you're part of this group and mm -hmm. that group and that group and the moment you hear a ding you look and you know you get distracted we mm -hmm. we live in a season of life where we have to be intentional and mm -hmm. that's also part of building your mental muscle mm -hmm. to stay you know to stay focused right to, you know the mental muscle to make sure that you're using your memory muscles building them so that in at that time they will continue to stay strong for yes yes thank i agree you. thank you for that my pleasure my pleasure and, did i answer and, that though Mm -hmm. Okay. You okay. did. Oh, yes. You answered that very well, actually. Okay. Very cool. Well. well, so that is not necessarily a memory loss issue. It's a lack of lack of focus issue. And right. mindfulness is it, it goes with awareness, right? Living in the awareness. So yes. that that was a great response. It definitely made sense to me. Awesome. I need to focus more. Too many things at the same time. Oh, do I? <laughs> because I do that. I've been doing that a lot more lately. You mm -hmm. know, so we we have to be intentional. Yes, and you know, let me tell you, it brings peace. It brings so much more peace when you are aware and you're able to be focused. Now, even goes for being a caregiver. You know, for all you that are listening. You know, there there is a peace in what you do, what we do. Mm. You know, you just have to find it. Um, it's not something that comes to you like stress does or fatigue or worry, you know. So uh, it does, like she just said, it just said it, you have to be intentional. So, yes. On the flip side, though, um, looking at moving forward, like looking... Um, when it comes to medications and memory loss, that's mm. kind of different. It's not the same as dementia, but it's 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 different than the being um, focused or whatnot, of course. Um, and I had looked these up. So some of those medications um, that can cause brain fog, they say, or confusion are things like anti-anxiety meds. Um you know, your Xanaxes and your Ativans and things, um, anti-seizure medications, um, tricyclic um, um, antidepressants. So that's that's for things like major depression, um, narcotics, um, painkillers, you know, your Vicodins and Oxys and all that stuff, even sleep aids. And I know um, I had, oh, what was it? Was it Lunesta? Oh, one of those top-notch sleep aids when I was pregnant um, with my first son. I was just having this the darnest time. Um, my children came out big. My oldest was nine, seven. Okay. When I tell you there was no rest, <laughs> there was no rest. And I think it was ambient. It was ambient. I had oh. went to the hospital. I was in, I mean, I was just, I kept having false contractions. It was just horrible. Um, I could not sleep. They gave me that Ambien. I said, if this is what heaven is like, take me now. <laughs> it felt so nice to sleep. It wasn't mm. even a high feeling. Oh, that was some of the best sleep. And I think I slept well for the next three days off that one Ambien. I wasn't like druggy, you know, for three days. I was just able, my body was in a routine for the next three days to just kind of rest, you know, I don't know what it was, but that is one of the ones on the list for memory loss, you know, oh my God. continued use those sleep aids, those lunestas, those are um, some of those that cause that incontinence drugs, you know, for people that um, have issues with urinary incontinence, things like that. These are medications that you need to look at in your medicine cabinet. Now, these are things that, can be reversed. They're not where it's, um, it leads to the dementia. 
but it certainly does lead to cognitive decline. And as those neurons in your brain are being disrupted by pharmaceutical medications, your body gets used to that, you know, and you can see where that would lead to, you know, um, dementia down the road. Because like, I know that I've seen a, a lot of senior citizens that are on antipsychotics, you know, to correct behaviors. Um, and some of it's needed at times. I'm mm. always going on trying to look for non, non-medicated, uh, you know, approaches, you know, a different caregiver, um, different tone of voice, you know, different demeanor, you know, different environment you know, a snack, something before that. But there are times where that's warranted. But you have to consider that if someone comes to you, especially as a dementia patient, and they're on major antidepressants, and a lot of them are, a lot of them are on anti-anxieties. I had a woman that was on lithium for years. I'm like, I didn't even know they still handed out lithium like that. That's not a fun drug, <laughs> you know. Wow. It's a very heavy, it's a very, very heavy antipsychotic, you know. So you have to think these people are now in their they're young people. They're young, they're in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s. That's young if you live right. And they've been on these medications for years, <laughs> just eating away at your brain tissue not allowing you to think and function and focus on your own, critically think, right? Wow. Where That's where you come in to, now these, how do, why are these demented patients taking all these antidepressants? Because they've been taking them for 20, 30 years. Oh my goodness. And now here we are, you know? Oh my goodness. So look in your medicine cabinets, look at your loved ones' medicines, and never again, we're not giving medical advice. So what you definitely don't want to do with most of those medications I just talked about, those classes, you don't just want to stop cold turkey because it will cause a really bad adverse reaction in a lot of people. But you do need to consult with your doctor if you or someone is dealing with memory loss. I don't care how long you've been on some of these medications. Look at those labels. Questions because... It's become numb. Oh, you're running out and they'll just give it to you. You're mm -hmm. running out, they'll just give it mm -hmm. to you. And we don't even ask questions. We are not necessarily reading the side effects. You know, I've been taking this for so years. So what? So see, one thing I remember, oh, okay. I would say even remember, not that I forgot, but one thing I've observed is that sometimes in the night when um seniors or even us can't sleep, mm -hmm. it's, it's possible that sometimes we're just hungry. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a, a gentle, nice snack will make all the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can assume that because, because you know what, even after being on some of these sleep aids for a while, you, our system get used to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not as effective as a, I may sleep at two, three hours and then we are up mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. So as caregivers, how do we figure out? How do we help? Mm -hmm. Sometimes a drink, some, I'm not talking about alcohol, a drink, because mm -hmm. let's careful. Like some water, some even a, a Coke, whatever, something, mm -hmm. anything that can help them relax. Sometimes it's hunger, sometimes it's thirst, sometimes it's just worry so soothing anything anything to soothe some gentle music in the background something but we always go back to the doctor and say oh now she's sleeping or he's sleeping only two hours on these meds and what do they do mm -hmm. we increase it and we increase yeah. it and we increase it mm -hmm. it's we've become people like seniors especially have become so medicated. Mm -hmm. And if they live in the facility and the, the staff is busy with other people, then mm -hmm. it makes them double the dose. So they'll sleep so they will have the peace to do their work. Mm -hmm. You know, so go ahead. No, I was gonna say that that's why continuity of care is important. Because if you're always there taking care of Mrs. Smith and I'm there picking up here and there or filling in, 
you know, I am going to give Mrs. So-and-so an added man because she's, she seems combative. She seems aggressive. I can't get her to take her meds, but she's never like that with you because she doesn't know me because I am a threat because I'm making her uncomfortable because of I'm, I'm in her space, her environment. So now I'm going to drug, I'm going to drug her, but you'll sit and say, well, okay, Miss Smith, you know, you don't take it right now. Why don't we go sit and watch this? Why don't we have a snack and then we'll take it? You know, why don't we do that? And she'll say, okay, never combated with you, never aggressive. And no Ativan. She got a snack in her meds. She got a bath and, you know, and a companion, you know, so it's all in the approach. Uh, continuity of care is important with caregivers. If you're not there all the time, all the time, be careful making suggestions about med changes for your loved ones. Mm. You know, if you're not there, don't suggest they be on medication or off medication because of how you feel. So be very careful with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Queen, what's the next one? Um, and for the record, I was not saying that I would drug people because I would not. I was just giving that scenario, you all. I do not drug my res my patients. I was just giving that scenario. That is never, ever my go-to um, because there's so many more solutions. Um, yeah, I'm the one to try to get somebody off of medication. So that was just a scenario. So don't <laughs> go thinking and that's what I did. I promise you, I do not. Um, okay. So yes, I mean, talk to your uh, physician, look at your medications, um, mm -hmm. even for future reference, you know, always know what you have in your medicine cabinet, what, and look at some, um, look at alternatives, especially non-pharmacological, non -pharmacological, non medical medication wise alternatives. <laughs> um, okay. So the next one, um, and we can kind of combine these next two, um, I am so sorry, Queen, but let me ask you this. Um, what? When it comes to the inability to sleep at night or to sleep through the night and stuff, we must also look at what they're eating at dinner, right? Yes. Yes. You know, it's, I think finding a really good time to eat your last meal is important. A lot of times you'll eat too early and then like, uh, Queen has said, you know, you wake up hungry, you know, um, and it can be disturbing, especially if you don't, if you can't get access to what you need, you know, as far as preparing your own meal. Um, and it can be very disruptive. Eating heavy foods, all that grease, all that fat sitting on your stomach at night, not being able to be digested well, can cause an upset. I'll have to look. If you all go over, I'd have to look at it because I don't know where else it is. But I will tell you, if you go over to my Facebook page, my Clearest Conscience page is pinned um, at the top of my post. And it's talking about um, how your gut is your second, it's, it's a second brain. Um, and so like there's so many things that go on in your gut that send out signals to your body. It's it's literally like a second brain. And I'm not going to go into all that, but um, that's important. It dictates a lot of how you feel. It dictates how your organs operate. You know, your gut does. Um, so what you eat is important. Absolutely. Um, drinking sodas, drinking ca caffeinated drinks at night is not going to help you sleep. Believe it or not, drinking alcohol will help you pass out. Oh, it'll, it'll help you pass out. You wish you didn't have to get up the next morning. You know, it's not going to help you sleep. You know, when you want to sleep, you want rest. You want peace, right? You want to, your body's supposed to unwind. You're not supposed to be dreaming about everything that went on today and yesterday and tomorrow, you know? So that is very important what you, what you put in your body. It's all the sugar, you know, drink about, think about your beverages, you know, all the sugars, so be mindful of that definitely that, that's really very very important um, the things we eat our gut health really dictates our health right mm -hmm. so we like like you, you this is a very important thing you're talking about sleep it goes back to say that sleep is sleep mm -hmm. basically is when the body heals itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when a senior 
it's getting to the point where they're not sleeping. That means they are not getting healthy. Mm-hmm. Their body is not doing what it's supposed to do. So mm-hmm. then it, it goes to further deterioration. They continue mm-hmm. to go down because they are not getting the sleep. So mm-hmm. we must mind the sleep time routine. I think we've talked about this before. From dinner to the time that we go to bed. Everything mm-hmm. must be to help and not to harm this. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Thank you for shedding so much light on that. And you know, my pleasure, Queen. And what's your environment look like? And I know we talked about this before, but what's the environment look like? You know, are you are you sleeping with LED lights in your face? Do you have a TV on? You know, listening to garbage? Even if you're listening to something, you know, the old classic movies, you know, you'll still get some raunchy, you know, commercials in there in between. And I don't mean, you know, like nasty sex commercials, but like even... You know, just negative things in your head. You know, are you ready to vote? Who are you voting for? Democrat, Republican, you know, COVID this. And then, you know, all these things that you get in these commercials that just fill your brain while you're sleeping. You know, we absorb all that. You know, what are you listening to on the radio? I would, um, I had a resident and she would be, she would, she used to get up at night and she would just walk, walk, walk. She walked all day, walked all night. Um, and I finally got her where she could not get up like that anymore. And it was unfortunate to see her not be able to ambulate and get around like that. But she would try and she would fall because she couldn't get up like that anymore. So I snatched up a radio and you know what we play? I would play um, either the country chat, the country station because you didn't find all the junk in between. Or I would go to um, the symphony orchestra. It's like you know, classical music, and I leave that on all night. And I would tell them, do not turn this radio off, leave it alone. You know, I don't care if you don't like the music when you're giving care, leave it on because you won't remember to put it back on, being mindful, you know. So um, the, your environment makes all the difference. And again, if you're not sleeping, if you go on and on like that, even as a caregiver, it's going to catch up with you. It's going to catch up with you. So, yeah, be mindful. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for the question. <laughs> You're welcome. So what's next? So really quickly, we'll go these up uh, these next few. We're almost out of time. We really enjoy talking with you all. So we'll go this quickly because we always get into good conversations. And I don't want to get lost. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's almost an hour. It is. This is a good conversation. <laughs> so if we're looking at um acute or sudden experiences. Those are things like strokes or head trauma. Those are important things to look at. Um, people have many strokes and you don't even know. There, there have been people that have had major strokes and they go to the doctor and then they find out at this major stroke that they've had plenty of many strokes, that they have no idea that that, that have occurred. You know, we don't pay attention to our bodies. You know, so when we have these weird tinglings down our arms, when we can't get rid of these headaches that are in certain spots, you know, those are things to pay attention and document. Check your blood pressure, you know, look for signs of a stroke and things like that. Um, Because we go to that and then we see that after some time, you've had some memory loss over time because over time you've had these strokes you didn't know you were having and you've been doing damage to your brain. Where in all actuality, and again, I'm not one to push medication. I'm not. But if it's going to help, then let's be realistic. If there's a medication that can keep you from stroking out again, wouldn't you want to be on that medication so you're not having these many strokes with memory loss that is really unrepairable at that point? You might not have full-blown dementia, but over time, those strokes will catch up with you when you're not taking care of yourself. Look at head trauma. I used to like watching UFC. I don't know how in the world I got to that point. Because when I see it now, it makes me sick to see these people just bash each other in the head. I'm like, okay, please don't hit him in the head no more. I think he's down, please. I'm like, oh my God. Who's side is this? And they're bouncing a doll. Yes. Who signs up for this? But 
you don't care about your brain. It's, it's so crazy. And we look at con um, concussions and we don't see that is permanent damage being done. And that's for entertainment. That That is a whole other story. Okay, that's all the story. But look at car accidents or look at, you know, a, a, a resident, a patient, a client that falls out of bed and they had this contusion and you do, we do the 72 hour checks, the neural checks. Right. But is there something else going on, you know, that's causing a bigger issue? So those are definitely things to pay attention to. Um, and look at anytime somebody has head trauma, don't ever take it lightly. If somebody's mm -hmm. cracked their head anywhere, do not take that lightly. I don't care how many times they fall. I had a lady years ago, she fell and cracked her head. I promise it was, this is one of the saddest cases. She fell, we had to send her to the hospital. She could cause she had fallen twice and hit her head twice. We sent her to the hospital. They sent her back in a couple of hours. If I tell you, it was myself and two other healthcare providers there. And um, we were all standing there. We had had to put her in a wheelchair and she was not wheelchair bound, but she was really confused. I cannot remember what was going on with her. I think we were checked. I know we checked her for a UTI and that was in, in the waiting. I don't know what was going on with her because she was normally be able to, she would walk around. We had to confine her for her safety. When I tell you, we turned our backs and she was on the floor again and hit her, cracked her head. Oh my goodness. I oh, I could have just died that day. I could have just died. I cried so hard. I'm like, how are three people right there? And she managed to fall anyways. It broke my heart. You know, um, oh, I had to send her out. I had, she wasn't one of those that could verbalize things like that. I had to. Again, I felt so bad. So I'm telling you, caregivers, it's, it's a serious task. It, it's still, like, I feel bad even telling you all, but it happens and it's the truth, you know? And we had to be honest about these things. That's why I'm so compassionate about being attentive to patient mm. care. Because even when we're doing our best, it's still not enough. Right. And so all we can do is try to make it so much awesome, more awesome when we have a network of people, whether we're healthcare providers or caregivers of our loved ones, we all need that support. You know, mm. it's very important to prevent these kind of things from happening. So uh, I'll say that we're almost out of time. I'll say with Parkinson's, um, same thing, watch with, um, I mean, those are things that are part dementia in that sense. I'm sorry, I have to sneeze and it won't come. Dementia. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have to sneeze. Um, tends to be... Um, a part of the Parkinson's progression process, unfortunately, because those neurons in the brain are deteriorating. Um, you'll see a lot of AIDS patients that come come down with dementia. A lot of um, a lot of chronic illnesses are part of dementia. Um, so again, that support group and just knowing what's going on with your loved one um, is important. Understanding how to give care is important. Um, a lot of us have really unrealistic expectations when it comes to caregiving because we don't understand the process. And I understand it's difficult to even talk about the process of your loved one uh, progressing with any kind of chronic illness. But I promise you, it's definitely worth um, diving into having that knowledge and knowing how to give the best care mm -hmm. um, in any kind of situation, dementia or not any kind of situation. Um, otherwise, you're kind of left in the dark and it causes some causes some stress, you know, more stress than it has to be. Um, so definitely if, with these things going on, don't necessarily jump to dementia. Um, you'll never be able to even diagnose someone with Alzheimer's until they die and they look at your brain. There's no way to diagnose anyone with Alzheimer's that's living like for 100%. That's why they usually call it dementia because mm. you can say, you know, exactly what it is. Now, if you have, you know, alcohol induced dementia, that's one thing you have, you know, Parkinson's related dementia, that's clear and cut, but to say Alzheimer's, they can't really figure out why your brain just starts deteriorating like it does um, in some cases. And that's where you have Alzheimer's, uh, the diagnosis or whatnot, the way the neurons are, are um, breaking down in the brain. So just be proactive. As we said, 
I will put this up on the peak, um, on the peak Facebook page for y'all to look at. Um, definitely check again, check out your medicine cabinets and see what's going on um, with your medications. Like Queen Edith said, think about how you're sleeping, even for as caregivers. I don't even care if you're not a caregiver. Hopefully you're watching and this blesses you. Think about how your life is looking and what your life is going to look like 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Like Queen Edith said, we, I remember, I remember we were like, we're in September, you know, yay, we're starting September. She said it. And now we're, it's the last day of September. It seems like it was like two weeks ago, you know? So um, time is quickly passing, you know, um, life is always changing and it does not require us to participate in it to do so. Okay. So <laughs> Oh. You may be living <laughs> it, but you may not necessarily be participating. Yeah, <laughs> in your own life. Yes. Yeah, so participate in your life. Participate. Be a part of how you, the outcome of your life. Okay. And that comes with intentionality. And I, I have to say this over and over again. Queen, before our time is up, I want to um, you to um, speak a little bit about um what something you just you wrote you said memory loss is not necessarily a natural part of aging mm -hmm. so the fact that i'm getting to 90 doesn't mean that i have memory loss I, I, i'll say this and you know i wrote it like that and so let me correct that um dementia is definitely not a part of okay. um net part of natural aging, memory loss. Let me, and I'm going to thank you for reading that. Let me give a disclaimer. I am not going to put this one on there. I'm going to correct it. And I'll put it on the Facebook page. Okay. Memory loss. I mean, as we get older, you know, things kind of slow, everything slows down, you know? So thank you for pointing that out, Queen. We do tend to um, forget things. Not be as sharp, but, you know, not being able to remember little things um, is one thing. You have 90 year olds that remember birthdays and all these, you know, all, you know, all 16 of their grandchildren's birthdays. That's a lot of birthdays to remember, you know, um, not being able to remember how you get home. When you're there, you can't get home. That's a different story. You have a lot of people that are sharp in their older ages. Um, in their silver ages, I'll say that. You know, you have 80, 90 year olds. That, my grandmother at 82 was very sharp. My grandmother was still driving. I have her vehicle now. Um, I bless my son with it, my youngest. But um, she was oh, driving. Finally, you got it. Uh, that's one of them. No, just one of them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Anybody would like to help out and support. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's his graduation gift, his graduation birthday gift? So, um, but she was driving. Up until, you know, she would drive herself to church. Like my, my grandmother is very capable um, in her right mind. Um, so she might forget things, you know, little things. Like she'll tell me something that she told me last week. It's because she likes to gossip and she tells everybody the same story. She can't remember who she told because she's gossiping. <laughs> you know, not because, you know. You so, alone. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think, you know, I think we slowly decline in our quickness. Um, but um, overall, we should, if we eat right, we take care of our bodies, we do have the capability of staying sharp. It's all in how your environment, you know, inner and out. So put good things in your body. That means the foods you eat, the water you drink. Um, watch out for the distilled water I heard. <laughs> I'm just joking. That was an inside joke, but okay. <laughs> um, you okay. know, um, what I mean, everything we put in our body, you know, what kind of what do you put on your skin? What kind of skin products do you use? You know, um, what's your environment look like? You might not smoke, but do you are you around a bunch of smokers? You know, what kind of what what words are you letting uh, be put into uh, you know come your way? Do you hear negative words being spoken to you? Are you built up with positivity? That'll that'll weigh you down. Let somebody always verbally abuse you and watch where you're at. Watch how much older you look, how much weaker you feel physically, how your hair is falling out, you know. So everything you put into your body. Have you ever thought about that? The pores in your skin, when you start pouring stuff into your body, 
Think about it. If you have a mosquito bite, you put alcohol. You get an alcohol pad. Do you ever think about how quickly that goes into your skin? Think about that. We are open full of pores, whether we see it or not. And that is all these orifices we have, what comes out of your mouth, what goes into your ear, what goes into your heart, all that matters. So be very, very intentional um, and care about yourselves, love on yourselves. It's very, very difficult. Um, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult to care for and love on others when you cannot wholeheartedly do it for yourself. And it can be done. You just lack the reward in doing it when you do it like that. Um, I have a thing coming up. I mean, we have to get ready to go, but I have a thing coming up. And I'm going to share this with you all because you all should do it for yourselves and try it out. Um, so I have an event that I'm going to be putting together. And uh, I'm going to let you know about it, Queen, because it's an exclusive okay. event. But um, say you got a wine, say a wine glass. I say a wine glass because it's not very big, right? And you have blue marbles and you have red marbles. You know, blue, like water, like life. So for everything that you, every blessing you have, every time somebody pours into you, every time you could do something awesome, right? Put a blue marble in that glass. What happens when you start pouring out of yourself for something that you don't have? Put a red marble. Every time you miss that mark, every time, you know, like you feel that. like you didn't make that. And at the end of the month, look how many blue marbles you have and how many red marbles you have. And ask yourself, can you afford to be pouring out of yourself or do you need pouring into? It's a good, fun way to measure up and think about some things. And it's, 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 and it's very visual, you know, mm -hmm. it's very visual. It, 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 you see now, okay, this is my life. Mm -hmm. I need to fix this. I like, I like the idea. Yes. So just, I mean, and that just, just a an example, there are so many things we can do to keep ourselves on track, to stay healthy, to be able to be there for other people. And being a caregiver looks a whole lot of different ways. Caring for others, giving care. You're a caregiver. Do it well. I love to care about everybody. We love to care about everybody. We here at Peak Home Care Associates, we love to love on you all not just clients. We love to love on our families of our clients. We love to love on anyone and because on we each genuinely other. care. And yes, because other. we care. And it's a pleasure. It is a pleasure. And we want to uh, encourage you all to try it out. Try being, paying it forward, right? Showing some compassion for yourselves first and for somebody else. The weekends here, see how many people that you can touch just by like Queen Ian said last week, just by smiling. See how many people you can shine your light into today, this weekend. We want to hear from you. Actually, I want to hear from you next weekend. I want you to tell me how many people you influence just by walking by and saying, you know what? I listen to Peak Home Care Associates. You know, this got me going. I want to spread some love. I want to spread some joy. And I want to get it back. Mm. I'm ready for it. Mm. We're ready for blessings here. I don't know about you all. We deserve blessings. We deserve blessings. Say with me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going I'm to stop there. I'm going to let Queen finish up because we are out of time, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Do me a favor, Queen. Will you give me the number? I don't know why. Speak that number for me. 317 317-813-0832. 317-813. 0832. That is our number. Like we always say, our offices may be closed, but our electronics are open. We are open electronically by phone, by email. Info, I-N-F-O at PeakHomeCareAssociates.com is a good way to reach us. And thank you. So yeah, 317-863. Did I say 813? Yep, I thought it was wrong. Two. I thought I heard it. I don't know. Yep, 863. I, I was like, that's an interesting one. 317 There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, it's still saying that. Hold on. Yeah. That, oh, maybe I needed to save it. Oh, I didn't save it. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'll say this. That was the first technical error that we had the whole time. <laughs> you, you're doing good. You're doing good. You're last doing week, good. it was a...
tricky one. <laughs> so we are so excited. We are so grateful that you all were here to chime in with us. I'm sorry, you were speaking, Queen. I'm sorry, I got lost. No, it's okay. You, you're having fun and I love that. I am. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the great things that we're doing here at Peak. So we appreciate you all tuning in and being a part of this conversation. And please um, share it on multiple platforms. Share it. We are on YouTube. We really want to get our um, our viewership up on YouTube. So if you guys can go over there and subscribe to that channel, um, I'd love to put some different content up over there um, and kind of make it diverse. But we are all busy. We, are work, we will work on that. I'm going to correct some things on this forum and I'm going to put this up on our Facebook page on Peak Home Care Associates um, on Facebook. So definitely subscribe there. And maybe our Instagram page too, because I was trying to share this on Instagram and I couldn't figure it out, but yeah. I can't figure it out. I think you have to go live separate. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, so what is the is it in, uh peak home care to what is it? 611. I think hold on, I'll tell you in just a minute. Okay. Our Instagram is um hold on, I'll tell you. Peak home care one 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 three ones. Peak home is care. It? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm on it, I'm there right now. Peak home care one one one. And I think next time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my phone. We're going to go on live there as well. We can do that. We can we can use another gadget to go on live there as well. So yeah. we, we are everywhere. So I see you all can find us anywhere. <laughs> find us anywhere. Right, right. But definitely support so you all can stay tuned with what's going on. You know, uh, I know I talked to Queen Edith. We are going to um, do an event where we'll be, um, we'll do a Zoom event. And so we want you all to be engaged and come on. And we're going to be talking about the grief process when it comes to, um, especially dementia, but not just dementia, the grief process when it comes to um, changes in our loved one's health conditions, you mm. know, and we don't realize that uh, we think grief is always um, tied to death, but it's definitely not tied to changes and loss. Okay. Um, so we are going and loss is not just in debt. So we're going to have that conversation. So that's why we want you to make sure you subscribe. Um, we want to be able to send out, um, notifications. We want to see you on zoom. If you want to be a part of the conversation, um, and we want to be able to help and give some support. So that'll be the first one we're going to be doing. So we'll do that in the next, um, here shortly. So stay tuned. I want to, we want to make sure that it is, um, Probably as protected as we can have it. Right, and we want to be able to bring you all the necessary tools that you need. Um, we definitely never want to fly by the seat of our pants. We want to be able to support you full heartedly. So uh, keep up with us so we can let you know when that's going on with everything going on. Um, we're going to have some events in the community. We have a lot of things going on where we can give back. We're going to see what our blue marbles look like <laughs> and our red marbles. <laughs> And we're gonna get I'm, I'm gonna do that thing. I definitely yes. want to use it, you know. Yes. Yeah. Because my best friend Ida was also sharing with me, like um I seen out on your desk at work. Mm -hmm. When you are at work, every time you do things related to um to work productivity, because sometimes we are there, but we are not being productive. You know what I mean? Yes. Is? So things related to productive, we put some a marble or something in a cup, you know. So there are things because we're visual people. Mm -hmm. But these are conversations for other times, and uh, yes. you don't want to take more of your time. What we want to say is this: in summary, a lot of things contribute to memory loss. Poor diet, poor diet will affect you because food is supposed to be medicine to these bodies. So how medicated, how properly, effectively medicated is our bodies? Mm -hmm. Sleep matters. Having enough rest matters. Water, oh my God, mm -hmm. you can't even overemphasize um, or underestimate the power of water, just drinking plain old water does to our lives. So 
let's be mindful. That's one of the words that has come up a lot. Let's be mindful. Let's stay focused. Let's be participants in our own lives. And remember, the body keeps the score. Your body will keep the score of everything you do to it. Get some exercise. Get some natural. Be in the natural environment and taking the gifts that have been so beautifully bestowed on us mm -hmm. that cost us no money. As yeah. always, we are peak on care and whatsoever our hands find to do, we ensure that we do it well. So until we come your way next time, have an amazing week and good caregiving. Yes. Peace, love, and blessings. Mm-hmm. <laughs>